Moving on to step five for the weighted average cost of capital, we now have to find the market value of equity. And finding the market value of equity is very similar to step four where we found the market value of debt. So I'd highly recommend you watch that video before watching this one. But basically the market value of equity is the number of shares that a company has times the current price per share or the current price per stock. Now, as I mentioned with the market value of debt, with the market value of equity, you want to ignore anything that says book value. Whenever you see book value, just ignore that because book value represents the value of the debt or the value of the equity when it was first issued. But we don't care about the value when it was issued. We care about the value today, the current price per share or the current price per stock. So whenever you see book value given in a question, just ignore that because we're finding the market value, the value of it today. So let's look at a scenario for calculating that market value of equity. So we have a company that has 100,000 common shares outstanding where the shares just paid a dividend of $4. The dividend growth is 4% and the return on equity is 9%. Now, a couple of things I wanna mention, this word common shares here, Whenever you are given common shares to deal with, then you are dealing with just that general equity class. Because if you remember, preferred shares are another source of capital. So we have debt, we have equity, which we're dealing with in this video, and then we have preferred equity. So preferred shares would fall into the preferred equity class common shares fall into this general equity class. So whenever you're talking or whenever a question is talking about common shares, you know that you're dealing with just that general equity class. So we have to find the market value of equity given all of this information. So first bracket, number of shares. Well, notice how that's given, this 100,000 here. That's the number of common shares outstanding that the company currently has. So that first bracket is gonna be 100,000. But notice how we're not given the current price per share. A lot of times questions will give you the current price per share. They'll just say, oh, the stock is trading at $62. Then we would take 100,000 and multiply by 62 and we get that market value of equity right away. But in this case, you're not given the current price per share, but you're given enough information to find it. You're given information about the dividends, about the growth of the dividends, and the return on equity. So notice how these dividends of this stock are growing at a constant rate. So if we draw this in a timeline, in time zero, we were told that a dividend was just paid of $4. So that dividend is here. And if you remember, the price of a stock or the price of a share is equal to the present value of all of the future dividends. So because this $4 dividend was just paid, then we know that that $4 is not going to be part of the price. But we have to use that dividend in time zero, the dividend that was just paid to find what the next dividend is gonna be. So we have to find what D1 is going to be. So D1 is basically equal to that $4 dividend that was just paid multiplied by 1 plus the growth rate. And the growth rate is 4%. So we have to convert that 4% into decimals. So $4, the dividend that was just paid, times 1.04, that gives us $4.16. So the dividend that's coming up in the next year is $4.16. And notice how that is going to be the first cash flow for a growing perpetuity because the dividends are just going to maintain that growth rate of 4% indefinitely. So because it's a growing perpetuity, to find the price of the share today, we have to take the dividend in that first period of $4.16 and then divide it by R minus G. R is the return on equity. It's given as 9%, so that's 0 0.09. You gotta make sure it's in decimals, minus the growth rate of 4%, so that's gonna be 0 0.04. So when you plug all that into your calculator, you would end up getting $83.20. So that represents the current price per share. 
and we just use the dividend discount model to find that. So now that we have that current price per share of $83.20, we can multiply it by the number of shares, which is 100,000. Multiplying those two numbers, we end up getting 8,320,000. So that represents the market value of equity. So this is pretty much as complex of a scenario that you'll get when finding the market value of equity. Usually the current price per share will be given, but sometimes you'll be given information about the stock, like in this case, about the dividends, about the growth of the dividends or return on equity, and you'll have to find the current price per share using the dividend discount model. And then once you find that price, just multiply it by the number of shares and you end up getting that market value of equity. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.